A year ago, I met two pairs of first-time developers who chose wildly different locations with hugely different developments, but the one thing they did have in common is both turned out to be trickier than they ever imagined. Right now, I'm totally sick of it. I don't want to know. I haven't got anything good to say. So this is the offending window. It's the window. And how long has this issue been going on for now? Oh, eight weeks, I should think. It must be. <laughs> so must eight be. weeks you've been arguing over the window? Yeah, just over the window. It's madness. But did their trials and tribulations put them off playing the property game? No way. I don't know what we're going to find. It can't be that bad. It's a small building. It's been here for 400 years and fallen down yet. It'll be fine. of location can never be underestimated when you're property developing. 36 months ago I met two couples who quickly found out you can improve a property but you can never change the location. <laughs> if you buy with something like an amazing view already in situ, like Mike Gregory and Sally Breeze have done in Clevedon just outside Bristol then you're off to a good start. Whereas developments in less exciting positions like this part of Surrey, 20 miles from London, are not so lucky. Developers need to be careful what they invest in. Take this striking 1930s Art Deco house. It's a great property. But some would say the safest solution with this house is to bury its Deco style inside a more suburban exterior. People around here like more traditional family homes with pitched roofs, not leaky flat ones. This house could be difficult to shift, but structural engineer Craig Young and his wife Tina have just sold their own home and invested £225,000 in the property. We're aware that it has some risk, but we're fairly confident that we can make it work. Tina and Craig bought the property for £225,000 and are hoping to spend only £40,000 on the renovation. Sell for an ambitious £350,000 and make a profit of £85,000, a massive 33% return on their investment that is practically unheard of. Which one of you is good with the money then? We're both very good with money. We like spending. <laughs> <laughs> We're both actually quite bad in terms of budgeting. I think I probably, I will probably keep a rein on it much more than Craig will. And are you confident you're going to be able to control it? No. Yes. <laughs> we are. We are going to do that. We are. We are. You're not. Yes, you are. No. We we know the criteria we need to use to make it successful, and we are going to make sure that it happens. So who's the boss between you two? We share responsibilities quite well. Do you? Yeah. I am. Laid out over two floors, upstairs there are two double and two single bedrooms with a smallish family bathroom and WC. Downstairs there's a living room and at the back of the property a dining area with an undersized kitchen next door. Tina and Craig want to open up this area by creating a contemporary open plan kitchen diner and give the whole house an art deco look, faithful to its original design. If they're serious about restoration, then they need to know their stuff. What's more, it will be really difficult to achieve on their £40,000 budget. Add to that the limited market for such a property and you've got yourself a very risky development. But neighbouring houses have found an alternative. It's interesting, this area, because a lot of this period of house, which are, they've built between the wars, um, have put pitched roofs on them. Now, I personally think that, in terms of design, that's a terrible thing to do. But there are some buyers who will be alienated by the flat roof and probably may not even come and look at the house in the first place. Considering its neighbours, it's a safer option to copy them and up for a more conventional pitched roof. It may be hard to find an Art Deco fan who's prepared to pay a premium for this property in this position. And they can't afford for this development to be a failure. We've sold, you know, our flat, you know, to do this project. We've got to make it work. We've got to get some money out of it. Otherwise, 
you know, our dream of becoming a property developer just doesn't materialise and we've got a lot riding on it. So if so you were in our position, would you still take that risk? And I don't mean to be rude. I don't know how to say this in a nice way, so I'll just say it. But if you're not good enough at design at the inside, it won't work. And if you are, it will. And I don't know what, how yeah. good you are at design. We don't know either. No, we don't, because it's the first time we've ever done it. It's not something I, I, I have the confidence to do, which I would ordinarily do. If you haven't got the confidence to do it, then I think you should go down the safe route. I think you should put a pitched roof on. Then you end up with a, with a perfectly nice house, which you'll sell for a reasonable amount of money. Maybe the first time round, you should, you should play it safe. Good. I like safe. For the first time in my life, you won't hear me saying that often, but in this case, I want the next project um, financeable, and I just want to get out of this one and on to the next one. Unfortunately, you two aren't doing the development together. I'm doing it with you, and I don't actually <laughs> haven't actually made that decision. So it's certainly something. It's certainly something we need to seriously think about and consider. And or maybe I will agree with you, but at the moment I still think we we take that risk. We we can do it. Tina is bravely sticking to her Art Deco vision, and this is fighting talk. But selling a niche property for a premium in this area will be a real challenge. On the other hand, a conventional family house in a great position is a much safer option. And that's just what developers Mike Gregory and Sally Breeze in Clevedon are banking on. They've bought this four-bedroom house outside Bristol with views to die for. It could be a great development and they're feeling pretty pleased with themselves. Kitchen should be nice, bit of wine on the top, bit of fresh fruit, and off we go. In they walk, snap it up. I had this lovely figure in my mind, if we could get away with a 70 spend, we're looking at a uh, 100,000 profit. Mike and Sally are hoping to maximise their profit by adding a large two-storey extension. Unfortunately, they're taking a massive risk with their finances to pay for it. Wangled some cheap finance off a credit card for nine months interest free. With a bit of luck, by the time the credit card want their money back, we can give it to them back without paying a bean of interest. Should be exciting. <laughs> or depressing. <laughs> they paid £320,000 for the property and are looking to spend £70,000 doing it up. They're hoping to break the ceiling price in the area by selling for £490,000. This would make them a fantastic £100,000 profit. But it does depend on breaking the ceiling price, which is a really hard thing to do. There's only two ways that you can break a ceiling price. Either you make your house better than all the other mm -hmm. houses in the street, or there's no other house on the street for sale and therefore someone's got to pay yeah. more mm -hmm. for yours. I don't think you can bank on the second because mm. there's not much you can do about no, it. Absolutely. So what are you going to do to make this development stand out? Um, bathroom's a bit like posh hotels, not that difficult to do but it really does wow people. Um, nice floor coverings, people walk in and say this is what I want to live in, this looks bang up to date, not too trendy but just spot on, you know, subtle but tasteful. Everything that makes people get impressed with houses. Mike's sounding very confident, and with the development in such a cracking position, he might just pull it off. Back in Surrey, it's starting to dawn on Craig and Tina that they've bought a very risky first development, and now they're getting cold feet about their Art Deco vision. We don't seem to have a problem making the decision, and then we're right, that's what we're doing. But then we tend to change our mind later. If you're an inexperienced property developer, then you need to make sure that your development appeals to the broadest possible market in the hope of guaranteeing a quick sale. Which is not what Tina and Craig Young are doing. They're developing a niche art deco property in an unfashionable part of Surrey. It's week one of the development. The builders are cracking on, but Tina and Craig are now starting to wonder if the Art Deco look is right for the property. So I'm taking them to this classic Art Deco house to help them decide once and for all if they're up to recreating the kind of Deco look that could get them a premium for their property. 
I think you should look at this house and make up your mind as to if whether you can make the inside look right. Because if you can't, don't do it. So what do you think of it? Um, my first impression is it's sort of a bit over the top. That's how I'd describe it. You're not a fan? No. Maybe it's just the furnishings. Um, you know, the, I really don't like some of the furnishings in it. So there's elements of this, though, that you have to use and take away. For sure. instance, the height of the door handles, for instance, that makes a massive difference. The door handles are much, much higher than they had been previously. If you look at the skirting and the detail of the skirting, they're low, they're bevel topped, they're simple. It's a lot of oak, a lot of exposed wood. Sure, yeah. You've got boards on the floor, but yeah. they're very narrow boards and they yeah. always were with deco mm. floors. An absolutely gorgeous dining room. I love this. This is lovely. This is... Yeah. Can I just ask you about the radiators? Do you think that's a detail that we must adhere to? I think in an ideal world you would, yes. But I don't personally have a problem with the marriage of contemporary yeah. design or other periods of design with the original architecture. But I think it's important that you think about it and that it works well together. Yeah. Sure. Mixing deco and contemporary styles can work, but you have to get it right. If they get it wrong, Tina and Craig will end up with a house that looks right on the outside but wrong on the inside. And that could be impossible to sell. I think you have to decide what you're going to do. Just believe in it. yourself and go for it. Because no decision equals no finished house equals definitely no profit. So I actually believe we could do it, but I'm just risk averse, you see. I don't like taking risks. You're the one who takes the risk, I don't. Yeah. It's your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Having looked at it, there are bits that are really lovely and that we could take away and, and, and do on a much smaller scale in our house. And I'm fairly confident we could we could do it. Right. Are you happy with that? Um, I love that house and um, there's lots in there that I'd like to take to our house. If you're prepared to stick your neck in the line, then Deco it is. Deco it is. Tina and Craig are now well and truly targeting a niche market for their property. A risky but understandable choice considering the architecture of the building. While in Clevedon, Mike and Sally are following through with their mass market, mass appeal approach in the hope of making a £100,000 profit. And they've given themselves a fighting chance because unlike the Art Deco development, it would be hard to fail in this great location. They're four weeks into the development and are adding square footage to add value, but that only works if you get the layout absolutely right. OK, so this was a lounge, um, and it's got to be the kitchen. No choice for right. It's got to be the kitchen. Why, why is the kitchen not going to be in the new extension? It's too big. Estate agents... I can you have nice. a kitchen too big? No, but you can have a lounge that's too small. And this lounge is too small for a house this big. Mike and Sally are extending the house sideways over two floors. They plan to turn the upstairs part of the new extension into a luxury master suite. And downstairs they plan to create a lounge and a garage. But I think this would leave them with a very inadequate kitchen. A much better use of space would be to leave this room as a lounge and turn the extension into a spectacular kitchen diner. Is this a plan here? Yeah. Because I have to say, I think the ultimate family house has a kitchen where you can cook, you can eat and you can hang out and yeah. you can sit and watch telly and it has views to the garden yeah. and you can access the garden and yeah. with yeah. this fantastic view that yeah. you've got really I think that you actually just want a massive kitchen and really the rest of the house is slightly incidental. I can't envisage getting the furniture in to make this fit because you know if you don't unless you brick this up so you've actually got a window here and you can actually arrange furniture how do you get a TV how do you get enough seating in here? We have a, a sofa there, another yeah. sofa there, have an armchair there. Mm. 
Don't it's frighten me. We plan this now. <coughs> oh, is it too? Is it? Are we too far gone to change? Wow, well, not mind. too far gone, but it's. Um, <laughs> I just I've got my head around what I planned. How do you feel about it? I like the idea of having the kitchen um, where everybody congregates and you all chat and cook or make tea and. Um, yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. Yeah, but now, you know, what do we do now? <laughs> By the end of the day, Mike and Sally have come to a decision. So when Sarah said what she did, you thought, oh no, don't mm. do that. Um, yeah, initially, oh, I was disappointed, I didn't want to hear that, I thought we got it right. Mm. And then she talked you through it, and what she said made complete sense. Um, I think we'd be daft to ignore advice like that from somebody who knows what they're doing. By putting in a large kitchen diner, they are again playing it safe and appealing to the mass market. Unlike Craig and Tina, who are taking the gamble of sticking with their vision of an Art Deco house. This means restoring the 70-year-old steel windows, all 17 of them. The existing windows are clearly in need of work, but Tina and Craig are hoping they can be repaired and have set aside just £500 for the work. The trouble is, until now, they've never checked if they're salvageable. As you can see, this, this is completely shot. There's not really anything you can do with that. Whatever you do, it's got to be replaced, simply yeah. as simple, simple as that. Okay. Yeah. So, if I wanted to replace them, how much do you think I'd have to spend? Well, on this uh, project, you're talking in the region of between 18 and 19,000 plus VAT. This is a huge blow, and Craig and Tina should have identified this cost before they even bought the house. As it is, spending nearly £20,000 on the windows will blow their £40,000 budget apart. Back at home, the seriousness of the situation is starting to dawn on Craig and Tina. As far as I'm concerned, it is not a disaster. The well, disaster. Well, I'm concerned, it's a disaster. I tell you why it's not a disaster. Seventeen thousand pounds worth of disaster. Yeah. Well, I tell you yeah. why it's not a disaster because it's only a disaster if, at the end of this project, we haven't made any money. To be honest, I'm sick of it. Right now, I'm totally sick of it. I don't want to know. All right, and it's wrong, I know. And you know, maybe tomorrow I'll feel better about it. But at the moment, I just I haven't got anything good to say. Well, well, no, I think we've just got to see what we can salvage out of it. The thought of having to spend an extra £17,000 is too much for Craig. And out of the blue, he decides he wants to get rid of the whole problem by selling the house. But I think they need to get things into perspective. I mean, I've been in your situation and it is really difficult when you just feel that everything is going wrong and you want to just throw in the card. I know that you're at the end of your tether, but the thing is, at this stage, is not to sell. You can't really afford to sell halfway through a development unless you physically have to because of you're bankrupt or you're going mad, but you really, really can't afford to sell when you've ripped a house apart because it's worth a lot less than when you started. It just feels at the moment that this project probably isn't the one that we should be pursuing. If this is going to be a career, developing properties, I don't think that you can jump ship on the first development when the going gets really tough. Putting in the windows will push Tina and Craig's budget up from 40,000 to nearly 60,000. And even though their target profit of 85,000 pounds was always ambitious, if they're careful, they should still be able to walk away with a reasonable profit. But first, they have to come to an agreement. Well, I'm fairly confident that Craig will do as I tell him to do, basically. And my view is, we go for it. We've just, we've started it. I don't want to give up. I think, having listened to Sarah, it makes me think, yep, we've just got to go for it. We've got to get on with it and get it finished. Tina's still really enthusiastic, and um, I just hope she can keep the cost down. And, you know, let's crack on and see how we get on. Oh, 
Tina and Craig Young could have played it safe by fitting in with their neighbouring houses, stripping the Art Deco detailing and turning their unusual looking property into a more conventional family home with a pitched roof. The pitched roof? No. The house would immediately become a normal detached house in any other road in any other part of the country. And, and as soon as we do that, then we might as well forget all of the other things that we're trying to do to keep the house in keeping with Art Deco. So they're risking everything on keeping the flat roof and the Art Deco design in the hope that a buyer will pay a premium for the property. In Clevedon, Mike Gregory and Sally Breeze might have chosen a safer house in a safer area, hoping to make a massive £100,000 profit. But they're financing the project on their credit cards, and they need to get it finished before the interest payments start. Two months in, Mike gets some bad news from his builder. Mark rang me up one night, and he said the roof really doesn't work. Um, there's a fairly major problem with it. Um, and that came as a bit of a shock to me. And he said, do you want the good news or the bad news? It transpired there wasn't really any good news. It turns out the roof of the new extension has to be a metre higher than shown in the drawings. And while it's not unusual to have to adapt your plans during a development, this means Mike has to apply all over again for planning permission. And he hasn't allowed any time in his schedule for this. Although he has gone ahead with a new application, Mike's in no mood to wait for it to be approved. We're going to make this, this roof two foot eight inches higher. I just hope to God the planning officers like it and the, the neighbours are okay about it. I've been talking to the neighbours, they're okay, so we're just going to do it. Even though the planners could force him to remove the entire roof structure, Mike goes ahead anyway. Only time will tell if this turns out to be a very expensive gamble. In Surrey at the Art Deco property, Tina and Craig's early indecision and the £17,000 they'll have to spend on the windows means their costs have risen sharply, but no one seems to have told Tina. Craig tries um, quite hard to stop me spending, I suppose. But in front of we don't row about it. He just tells me not to spend so much and I just ignore him. It's all down to who wins the power struggle between Tina and Craig. And I've come along to mediate. This is the um, toilet we want and the sink. Beautiful, right. aren't they? They are absolutely beautiful. How much do they cost? It's about £1,000 each, isn't it? Yes. £1,000 for the, the pan and system. Yeah, yeah. And a thousand pounds for the basin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That actually is quite a lot of money. I, I personally think on a pan system. Is it? Is it not? I mean, have I gone mad? Is that not? No, you are mad. Not, but it is a lot of money. I think we've probably gone mad. I've probably gone mad. I think it probably. Yeah, it is quite a lot of money. It, no, um, it's not a lot of money. It's a massive <laughs> amount of money. Do you think this is a good idea? Um, I think no. Who is controlling the budget here? Oh, is anyone controlling it or not? I am doing my best to curb the spending. Does that mean controlling budget? Is that the same thing? <laughs> I mean, you're, um, you're busy spending, are you? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I am in control of the We are in control of the budget, aren't we? Where are you? How much have you spent? We've spent our budget. Yeah. And more? Yeah. Tina seems intent on unnecessarily eating into their profits. In Clevedon, Mike's credit card loan means his £100,000 profit margin depends on keeping to schedule. And that means avoiding delays at all costs. And he's not only gone ahead with the roof before planning permission, he's also decided to add a window to the kitchen without waiting once again for the approval from the council. The neighbour's got a window. The window knew it wasn't on the original planning consent and objected. And the council have upheld the objection saying it needs to be bricked up or obscure glass. You need the view, you can't forego a view like that. Unfortunately for Mike, this view also looks straight into his neighbour's bedroom. That window, well, it really is appalling to have to look at that from your bed. And I have put net curtains up, which I don't like, to give me a little bit of privacy. So I strongly oppose it and I'm waiting to see what does happen. 
Mike's in a deadlock with the local council, but the clock's ticking and he's putting the whole development at risk. So, so this is the offending window. It's the window. Yeah. And how long has this issue been going on for now? Oh, eight weeks, I should think. <laughs> Must be. So Must eight be. weeks you've been arguing over the window? Yeah, just over the window. It's madness. The, the right route at this stage in my opinion, is to just sort it out and mm. move on. Uh, and I don't think trying to fight it is the right solution. Mm. You certainly don't want to fall out with your neighbour. No. So I think you're only really left with one option, and that's to obscure the, the panes of glass mm. that are in the window as they are. One of the ways you can obscure the glass that's already in there is you can use a spray like this, which is just um, a frosting spray, and you can spray it on. The disadvantage is if you don't get it even, it looks absolutely dreadful. I think you'd be better off getting somebody in to do it mm. myself, because you want it to look perfect. Yeah. What you can do is not do the top half, only do the bottom half so that you can't see into her bedroom, and then leave a clear panel of about an inch mm. around the outside here, so that you've just got this obscured piece here, which is the, the view that they've got an issue with. The idea of obscuring half out the glass is a really clever way of doing it, though. The so council will go for that, You'll just so we could get it finished. Yeah. You'll go for give in. I think you really should go down this route because you've got to get on with this development mm. and you've got to get your planning permission through. You're running with no planning at the moment. This is true, yeah. You've got a big extension mm. and it's not approved, so... Yeah, I mean, in theory, you're, you're in really yeah. deep water. <laughs> It's never worth falling out with your neighbours. It's much more important to get on with the property and turn the development around quickly. Especially if you're borrowing money on a credit card. Down in Surrey, four months in and six weeks over schedule, the steel windows finally arrive. All £17,000 worth of them. And although this will send Tina and Craig way over budget, I think this is one overspend they simply had to make. To get them in, um, it's been long and arduous, but now that we've got them and they're going in, it's absolutely fantastic. It's a major turning point as the final stages of the development can get moving. After all that I've been through with it, it just feels really quite amazing to actually see the end in sight, doesn't it? Yeah. To actually think, we are going to finish this and it's going to look fabulous. In Clevedon, the development is also coming together. The local council have approved my idea of obscuring the lower half of the kitchen window, as well as allowing the extra height on the roof. The trouble is, the extra window, alterations to the roof and a last-minute decision to put decking in the garden have all come at a cost. And Mike has had to take the painful decision to sell his car to raise the extra £20,000 cash. I'm sitting in a car I love on a day like this, it's perfect, but... It'll pay for the overspend without raising any more money, without costing me any more money, so it's not nice, but I can do it. It's taken five months of back-breaking work, but the renovation of this striking Art Deco property in Surrey is finally over. I had my concerns as to whether Tina and Craig could pull off the Art Deco design, but they've done their homework and got the detailing just right. An Art Deco enthusiast should really go for the look down here and won't be disappointed by the upstairs either. The 
there's no expense spared here, especially in the bathroom. Oh my word, you did it. You bought that loo. You have spent so much money yeah. on this place. It looks fantastic though, doesn't it? It does look good, but my goodness, there was no control about the money, mm. was there? Yeah, there Spending was. Spending was, was like control. unlimited. Craig, do you think that Tina's actually brainwashed you into, into just opening the checkbook and just going for it? No, I think we agreed that Tina was probably looking after the budget and I uh, just gave up. <laughs> He certainly did. And the final result is that their original £40,000 budget rose to a massive £118,600. That is a lot of money. <laughs> so that's actually three times your budget. I'd like to say there are absolutely no regrets about the amount of money we've spent because we've got such a beautiful house. But of course there is. We, you know, we must regret some of the money that we spent because it's just cut down any profit we make massively. You're still hoping that you'll get 350? Yeah. Because if you got 350, that would give you a £6,400 profit. <laughs> so at least yeah. it's a profit. It's a profit, yeah, we haven't lost anything. But will the agents agree with Craig and Tina's valuation? One of the things that I do like is that the detail, there's been a lot of time and effort has got into this. Super bathroom. Never seen a, a square toilet quite like that. It's great. Granite work surfaces. A real sort of Art Deco feel. There may be one small issue. In this area, in my experience, buyers are telling me that they would prefer a house with a pitch roof as opposed to one with a flat roof. I think somebody who absolutely loves the Art Deco feel may come through the door and absolutely fall in love with the property and buy it. They don't come along very often, um, but they do come through through the door once, once in a while. I value this property at £310,000. If the right person comes along who loves Art Deco, I think you can achieve £320,000. I value this property at £325,000. We have had three agents now to value the property and um, they didn't come in as high as I know you'd like. They came in at 310, 320 and 325. If you did sell it for an average of those three valuations, it would be 318,000, which would make you just over a 25,000 pound loss, which which um, isn't great. No, it's awful. You're speechless. <laughs> Just terribly disappointed. I would really have dearly have liked it to come out at the 350 and for there to be a good profit and um, go straight on to the next one and you know, that kick us off on a really good, successful um, venture and it hasn't. There were two challenges to this development. One was to get the Art Deco look right and the other was somehow to do it within budget. One you did achieve, I think it looks fantastic, but you certainly failed dismally really on doing it within budget. There's no half measures no. with us. No, 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 there certainly isn't. No. I did manage to spend Which a fantastic... Which doesn't really bode well for a future career as a successful property developer. No, I would agree no. with you there. I no. agree with you too. Um, well, no, I wouldn't, because then there's always now room to improve. Yeah, you I couldn't mean, get it wrong again like this. Tina and Craig's inability to keep their budget under control has really put pay to this being a profitable development. So for now, they've decided to move in and wait for a local upturn in the market before trying to sell their property. It could be a very long wait. While Mike and Sally in Clevedon have, in 26 weeks, made the very most of their stunning position.
The fabulous kitchen diner with its stunning views will really help sell this property. By taking my advice and putting the kitchen in the extension, I think they've ended up with the ideal space for family living. Upstairs, Mike and Sally have mainly played it safe with a neutral colour scheme, but have really gone for it in the new extension. The master bedroom certainly makes an impression, and the ensuite is very slick. I'm not surprised Mike and Sally found it hard to stick to their £70,000 budget. Well, we ended up spending, um, including the fees by the time we sold, £127,000, which is way off what we came with originally, but... You know, I think the value is going to reflect it, and I think it's worth 550. That's 50 grand more than Mike and Sally were originally hoping for. But if they still want to clear a hundred thousand pound profit, that's what they'll need. Wow, that is impressive. Excellent family room and some lovely views out through the patio doors there. Perhaps a little bit smaller than I would have liked for this type of house. This has obviously been very, very expensively done and beautifully thought out. You can imagine sat here in the evening, it's a nice southwesterly aspect, nice glass of wine and a barbecue, perfect. I'd recommend putting this property on the market in the region of £530,000. I would be happy to market this property at £550,000. In my opinion, the current market value lies in the region of 550000 Mike and Sally bought the property for £320,000 and spent £127,000 on the development. And if they sell for the average of the three valuations at £543,000, they'll make a £96,000 gross profit. A truly fantastic result. Yeah, when I started it six months ago, you just got this figure, you think, to make £100,000 on one house clear would be fantastic. 5% below that, I'd be happy with that. Well, that's still a big chunk of money for six months' work. A week later, Mike and Sally do even better and get an offer at the top valuation of £550,000. But, unbelievably, they reject it. Instead, they make the big decision to sell their family home to fund their next project and move into the property themselves. And their next development is in a very different location. Gosh, it is right on the road, isn't it, this? It is. Centrally located, I think you'd call that, isn't it? <laughs> Close to all the amenities. Or just noisy. Gregory could have walked away with over £100,000 profit from his first development, but instead he decided to move into it and launch himself into yet another development. This time he's got a much more challenging property on his hands. It's a combined shop and three-bedroom house in Clevedon Town that Mike is planning to turn into four one-bedroom flats in just five months. And while his last property was a safe bet in a prime location, he's now bought on a busy road right next to a pub with a distinct lack of parking. He'll have to do a great job to lure people to this location. But Mike, back in the driving seat in more ways than one, as ever, is full of confidence. I had some concerns about location, especially with a pub next door on a road, but um, the agent assures it's OK. And as an agent I trust, um, I haven't got any concerns. It's not that noisy, really. Once the double glaze is in, it'll be all right. But location is not the only problem here. Parts of this property were built in the 17th century, and when a building is this old, they have a nasty habit of throwing up some nasty surprises. I don't know what we're going to find. It can't be that bad. It's a small building. It's been here for 400 years and fallen down yet. It'll be fine. In my experience, old houses never give you a free ride. Mike hasn't even had a survey done, and on a house this ancient, that's a huge risk. He's going to have to keep a very close eye on his finances. 
he bought the property for a well-priced £230,000. The clock is already ticking on a budget of £100,000, as once again Mike couldn't resist the lure of cheap credit cards. And he hopes to sell all four flats for a total of £430,000, giving him a great potential £100,000 profit. It's week one, and just as with his first property, Mike is on-site project managing, which is a good thing, because unfortunately, problems with this ancient building have now materialised. Right, this is old buildings. This is why we've got a contingency. I didn't know the floor was this bad. I had a feeling it might be a bit tap, but this looks a bit serious. It's supposed to be supported by the wall, and it's not. The whole thing just moves. It turns out the old timbers are riddled with wet rot, but they're essential to the character of the building, and salvaging them is a huge job. Right, so the can of worms we did open, and the biggest one is this. Um, this is a big old 500-year-old timber. It's 10 inches wide, 12 inches deep. We lifted the floorboards, and we've lost six inches through rot. So, got uh, two steels made up, and we've sandwiched the beam within the floor in the steel, so from downstairs it looks like a beam, upstairs you can't see it, and structurally it's as, in, in, as sound as it needs to be. Salvaging the timbers puts a serious dent in the budget, but unlike Mike's first development where he made no allowance for emergencies and went £50,000 over budget, this time he's made sure there's a contingency in place to take the strain. Even so, it's hit Mike badly. But ten weeks in, opportunity knocks to claw back some cash. One of the greatest dilemmas in developing is when to go for your next property. Despite being in the middle of one development, Mike feels the time is right to go for another. We got halfway through this, but we're always looking for bargains. I just went into the agent who we deal with a lot, uh, and I threatened to buy something from a different agent. He said, that's too, too expensive, look at this one. So we went and looked at it, went down the road that evening, looked at it, and it was just, this looked like a bargain to me. At £162,000, this three-bedroom house does look like a good buy, and Mike decides to snap it up. The only problem is, he's maxed out on his credit cards and never won for a conventional loan. You guessed it. It was fairly painful I sold the last Porsche. Selling this one was a bit easier, because I know we can get another one afterwards. It's all right, it's business. It's a job, isn't it? Mike's plan is to give the property a simple refurb and sell it on at a quick profit. And that's exactly what he does, walking away nine weeks later with a great £25,000 profit. This is good developing. If you buy low and turn a project around quickly, you're unlikely to lose. Back in Cleveland Town Centre, four months into the development, Mike's finding that turning around flats quickly is not quite as simple. Splitting the house into separate units means he has to comply with a raft of regulations, and it's slowing the development down. This is the high-tech ceiling going in to comply with the sound regulations. We've got plasterboard, two layers thick, there's fireboard already above this, so quite a lot of requirement compared to what we've had to do in the back flat. Building regulations can have a huge impact on a development, and it's crucial you build them into both your budget and your schedule. Even though the timetable has slipped, I still think he's done well. Bang on budget, and one month behind schedule, two of the flats are finished. The dark, pokey rooms have been made into cool, contemporary living spaces, complete with open-plan living kitchen area and ultra-modern flat-screen TVs. Gosh, this is sweet, isn't it? It's lovely, really. Yeah, lovely. This is, this is satisfying. But really small. Yeah. It is. It is. Small price, small flat. Can't argue with that. They are small but perfectly formed, and Mike has used the space well. The reflective surfaces in the kitchen add to the sense of openness, and the built-in appliances throughout should be a real draw to first-time buyers. Keeping the original timber has really paid off, and will set these flats apart from your standard starter home. 
On the inside, at least, a resounding success. It's right on the road, isn't it, this? It is. Centrally located, I think you'd call that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Close to all the amenities. Or just noisy. Uh, yeah, it's not that bad. Considering that your last development was in a cracking position, as good as you can get, I mean, this isn't quite as good, is it? It's, it's right on a really busy road, by a level crossing. It's got one parking space for four flats with a nightmare parking situation outside. Did you think about all these factors when you... Oh, I always thought about it. I mean, parking's always been an issue. I lived in a, a terrace house years ago and it was a problem, but it's just a fact of life, unfortunately. My thoughts are, if you're a first-time buyer and you're a bit strapped for cash, you can have a car anyway. You've got How a bus stop outside. So they have to do public transport? There's public transport, they can get a bike. Or well, we might even throw one in at this price. <laughs> be worth doing. <laughs> so it's a flat and a bicycle? Absolutely. A bargain. <laughs> By giving these flats a young and stylish feel, Mike's done everything he can to stack the odds in his favour. He's had a local agent in and the valuation is in line with the £430,000 he wants for all four flats. If he does manage to sell them, together with the 25000 he made on the quick turnaround development, he'll make a tidy profit. So potentially, if you sell it, a potential £100,000 profit yeah. on this. Yeah. Gosh, so £125,000 you've made in the, last, six in the last six months from developing. That's fantastic. Yeah. Mike has nerves of steel and unshakable confidence. And when it comes to the way he finances his projects, that's no bad thing. So basically, you're funding developing through credit cards and Porsches. Not Sounds totally. It, it does, doesn't it? But then I haven't got a Porsche anymore, have I? So. Because you sold it <laughs> because to I pay for it. development. So you have got lots of credit cards yeah. and no Porsche, which means that you are yeah. funding it through Porsches and credit cards. Yeah, I suppose so. It's unconventional, it's risky, and I would never recommend financing a project this way. But so far, amazingly, it's worked for Mike. So is it dentistry or is it development? What's, what's your thing? It, it's, it's both. I love my patients and I love property. So, I can't jack either of them in. I just want a nice mix of the two. And at the moment, we seem to have it. It's going really well at the moment, but I guess one day it could go the other way. It's a chance you take. It's, it's the game, isn't it, of developing. You're not going to win every time. We're just on a high at the moment. It's good fun. Well, good luck with the next, the next project. We'll invite you back. Excellent. <laughs> Mike certainly isn't afraid to take a gamble. To be a successful property developer, you do need to stick your neck on the line. And I, for one, wouldn't bet against him continuing to make money in the property game.